Hello and welcome to Dire Bear. It's Tuesday night. So of course that means we're playing Valley by Night River City, our Vampire 5th Edition actual play. I'll be your storyteller for the evening, Jason. And with me tonight is Duba as Walter. Sarah playing Emma. Jeremy playing Egidio. And Rappy playing Iola. All right, this is it. The beginning of the end. Second to last session. You say it's the last countdown? Perhaps even the final? No, say, I would very specifically say not say that. I, that's why they were separate. We're going to get YMCA'd. Going to get YMCA'd? I don't know. If I could use copyrighted music, we'd have started with Bloodhound Gang tonight. The roof is on fire. I thought that was going to go a completely different way, and I was going to question it severely. <laughs> That's true. I guess they're known for more than just that one song. Yeah, anyway. <clears throat> All right, who remembers what happened? Who or who would like to give us the recap of last session? So many things. All happening at once. Ah. Uh. Pretty confident there's at least a couple meetings that were had. Those majority meetings. That's true. Eric had to meet up with uh, Old Montgomery, a very old Bruja, uh, Bruja a very old gangrel that lives in the Wheeler Wildlife Refuge. That's it splits the city of Decatur in two, but not like down the middle. I mean, it's a it's a much smaller side to the west. Which really isn't a concern to y'all anymore because the cam took that over the last couple of sessions. Yeah. And then he met up with some lupine friends. Friendly acquaintances, at least. Non-enemies. Which sometimes for a vampire is the best you can do. Uh. <clears throat> And tried to make a deal with them uh, to attack the camera reinforcements coming from the city of Moulton, which is to the uh, west of uh, Decatur. You know, like a 30-minute drive away, not, not real far. Don't know yet if that's going to bear fruit. Well, I know because he made the rolls. But, but the rest of you don't know. Well, we have inkling that it might from Iola's um, premonition. That's true. That's true. She did have her premonition showing a lot of different ways that night, or the, the whatever night it was, is going to go down. Some of it was good, some of it was bad, some of it's up for interpretation. Like any good vision. And let's see, other important things. You talked to Matic. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Sent word, I think, to Clint about potential werewolfiness. Yes, yes. Just so, you know, since he's our neighbor. Yeah, yeah. And since if the werewolves don't do anything, those reinforcements from Molten would be driving right past his domain. Mm hmm. Uh. I believe you also managed to contact your sire. Mm hmm We don't know where Harmony is. Yeah, you tried to contact her, and, uh... You got her roommate, you guess? Roommate or, like, long-term lunch date? It's hard to tell. You sound like a confused old man. Yeah. Oh my god, they're... Oh my god, they were roommates. Uh, but yes, he had, best he could remember, he hadn't seen his uh, nurse in a while. Or didn't see her right then, was wondering where she was at. It was all kind of a jumble. And it was Maddox we went and saw, and he seemed a little suspicious of August. Yes. Uh, it's a little late in the game to be suspicious. Come on now, is he or is he? <clears throat> 
Well, I mean... I'm not saying that to anybody here. I'm saying that to specifically to Maddie. Well, the... I'm saying it actually to Jason. Really? No, no the... Uh... Specifically not saying it to Jason. I'm saying it to Maddie. Okay. Yeah, the... Uh... Well, the far barony baron that... Uh... That the GDO saw had, had clearly betrayed you. Uh, you know, he was kind of pushed forward by, uh, August. by August. Uh, though it's not like anybody else in the domain or in the city had any issue with it. You know, there was No one had a better you know, idea. No, nobody was yeah. suspicious of the dude or anything. So and He'd been the right hand before, so it was like, he's a good choice. But, uh, but Walter, doing some... Uh, Research and getting his his little uh, nos net going. Uh, had discovered a few people that had been traveling to the far baronies <coughs> or the outer baronies. Uh, you know, not right before all this went down. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but in the week or so leading up to it, uh, they included August. They included uh, Josephine. And they included Woodard. So that was a little list of uh, at least mildly suspicious people for you to keep an eye on. You know, could be nothing. I mean, y'all have traveled to other Baron's domains before, so you know. Uh, but upon hearing about that, Maddox got extra suspicious. And he sent someone out to contact Harmony. I mean, we were at Paranoia Plaid already, yes, this so... True. This is true. I just picture... I'm, I, I picture y'all having a paranoia sign, like... Well, most of y'all haven't been to Decatur. But, uh... If you drive by the... State Troopers Office in Decatur. They got a little sign out front, front with like Smokey the Bear on it, talking about the chances of like a wildfire. That usually it's just high or very high, but every now and then you drive by and it's extreme. I feel like Plaid would be the next prank up. It would actually be a fun prank, except that it's in front of a State Trooper Office. I think it's hot pimple alert. Go by how gross, how gross the thing is. The cyst alert. Oh no, I know what y'all need to do. All right, uh, stuff's getting bad. But how bad is it? You look over the Waffle House; they're closed. <laughs> oh shit! All right, just pack it up. This was a nice city while it lasts. We're just gonna re. No, we gotta go. <laughs> Don't even just. We'll we'll buy new stuff when we find a new place. Just leave it here. It's contaminated. But we ended the session with everybody. Uh, going to bed. Mm -hmm. So we start tonight with y'all waking up. Everybody give me that rouse check. Hey, I gotta good. look up healing. I'm again. good. I'm good. Alright, how many of you are injured from the previous night? Or previous couple of nights, briefly? I think both her and Kyle are? All right, Emma. What kind of healing are you going to do? I got to look up how to. How do you? Um, what's the role for happens. aggravated? I think it just happens. Uh, you have to make it's a it's a number of rouse checks you have to make. Uh -huh. And for aggravated, it, is it three for aggra every level of aggravated or two? Part three for every level. Okay. And then superficial. Does it just heal over time or? Superficial, I think you just make a rouse check per superficial. Oh, you may only be able to do something in that. Let me look at it. Yeah, it's like, I'm not... I didn't get beat up a lot last game, so... Alright, superficial health damage. At the beginning of a session... Oh, it's mortals. Vampires can remove a number of superficial damage levels from their health track by rousing the blood each turn. Uh, let's see page 128. Couldn't you just have it all there together? What's, what's wrong with that? They 
want you to see all of the artwork in the book. What yeah, page was it? One thirty-eight. I'm sorry, two two eighteen. I, I misread. Wait, that's actually further back. How? Oh, because it didn't use the word healing; it used the word mending. For my surface points. Well, they have to be unique. If they're not unique, what the hell then? Yeah, White Wolf has never been good about making books that were like useful at the tables or like looking stuff up. That's what players got people making GM screens is for. Yeah, apparently. Okay, to mend aggravated, wait until next nightfall. Okay, so I would have done this before I woke up. So three yeah, aggravated is three per point, and okay. super or superficial is just one. Okay. I think you can only yeah. do one aggravated. An, is it one aggravated a night? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I can at least get rid of my aggravated, hopefully, and then at least a couple of superficial. Yeah. Well, the trick is, it gets rid of it regardless. It's just how much hunger. Yeah, it's just how hungry. Yeah, yeah. I think the superficial is a uh, optional. Yeah, the superficial. You can do the superficial more than once. You know. And you can do it kind of whenever. All right, only got one point hungrier on the aggravated, and I'll roll the superficial in one second. Okay. Uh, it just knocks it, it all the way have, down. Do you only have one ag? I got two ag. All right, then you, you healed one of them first. You cannot oh, heal yay. Your, your superficial. Oh. Mm. But I and I can't roll additional. I don't believe so, but I will double check for sure. Okay, it said two eighteen. No, I'm on I'm on one eighteen, not two. Why am I having so much trouble finding pages today? Math, just yeah, maybe maybe I didn't take a long enough nap when I got home from the doctor. It doesn't say anything about not being able to heal superficial if you have aggravated. Uh, I mean, it, it is white wolf. It could be on a completely different page. Yeah, this is true. You make one rouse check per turn to mend the superficial, meaning aggravated. Let's wait to the next next nightfall. Make three rouse checks. Uh, removes aggravated damage as well as one crippling injury or similar impairment. Can only mend one point of aggravated per night. Their hunger is above hunger five. They follow torpor rather than testing for hunger frenzy. Yeah, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying anything there, and I'm not. I'm not looking at the whole book. So, go ahead and make your superficial rolls. Right. Frankly, I would love for you to start tonight in a hunger frenzy. Go for it. <laughs> I mean, she's going to be going hunting now, but she's not in a frenzy. All right. So you're all patched up except for that one aggravated. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so you wake up for the evening. Uh, Emma, you can tell you're still injured. Yep. So you start making your plans to go hunting. Are you just going to do the typical DoorDash thing you've been doing? Okay. Yeah, it's quick, it's easy, it's something she knows she can do before stuff gets questionable for the night. All right, you can go ahead and make the roll for that. I think I'd remember my stats by now, but no. Maybe by next week. I'll be really good on them next week. Let's just watch. Uh, 
four successes. All right, that's enough. Uh, Draining two, leaving them a nice orange juice. Is two all Maybe you need? Maybe a five. <laughs> Uh, a biggie bag. Oh, like two was all I needed to get it back down to one. She's not going to drain someone okay. to zero. Okay. You were not. I thought you might be hungry than that. Okay. Yeah, I, I got lucky on the dice rolls. So yeah, you you basically get out of your apartment and you beeline to an apartment that you know has got a dude that lives alone. You know, you've delivered actual food to him before. And he recognizes yeah. you, so he doesn't hesitate to open the door and talk to you and, you know, better. She, she does do the forget me bit and everything, so. <laughs> forget me and drink this orange juice when you wake up. Here's an orange juice. Here's a $5 biggie bag. Here's some iron pills. Iola, you awaken. Um, he's probably going to go hunting okay. as a precaution. Everybody's grabbing a bite to eat as soon as they get up. Is she going to draw one of her cards? Yes, yeah, she does. Give me a minute. Her last draw okay. for the campaign? Or Chronicle, excuse me. Nine of Cups faced up. Nine of Cups. Fulfillment, gratitude, joy, indulgence, wishes fulfilled. Alright, the, the description that I've got here is you are basking in the abundance of life and experiencing your emotions with such intensity and pleasure. This is, this is why the Nine of Cups is often called the Wish Card. It comes as a sign that the planets align and you have everything you wished for. You could not be happier. <laughs> Weird flex, universe. <laughs> Weird flex. So, On the eve of battle. The night is going to suck for the entire city. Except there's one little beam of moonlight that just strikes its one lady. She's in her groove all night. Yeah. I was going to be in a very upbeat mood. She puts in her earbuds. She's listening to her music. She just walked through the fights, capping people. It's going to be great. She has her favorite music on. But AC is turned on. Despite the, the other otherwise bad uh, portents for the, for, for the coming time, apparently tonight's going to be a good night for you. Yep. All right, so it's early evening. There's a few businesses that are still open. Nothing's nothing's real busy. What with the lockdown and all, but. Uh, mm -hmm. But like the Waffle House, there's a couple of restaurants that are still open, <clears throat> mostly in the drive-through capacity. But. And your usual sneak and uh, wait by the garbage. For somebody to kind of come out. Alright, so you basically you're making your way over to the Waffle House or one of the other restaurants in the domain. Mm-hmm. Alright, give me a roll. Hey Mike, that weird person's stuck out there again. Ah, eh, she'll go wait a little bit. Basically. Also, um, wow, word, I get, uh, hi, Eric. Hello. Six successes. Oh, yeah, absolutely no problem. You've got somebody emptying the garbage as soon as you get there. All right. Going to, uh, just slake one hunger. Is that and all you needed? Uh, I'm not going to kill him. She'll do enough not, killing. Kill them. Huh? You can get three she, and not kill them. No, she she had two hunger. Oh, I see. 
Just one moment while I get Eric in here. I snuck in. Hello. You didn't Hello sneak there. in. I heard you. Did you? We were just, you know. We did. Doing things. Ah. Uh -huh. General Kenobi. Hello. <clears throat> All right, let me see if I got everybody in the right spot now, and I believe I have. Woo! I didn't want well, second to last session, and I have it down to a sign. Uh. All right, so Emma and Iola have fed. Walter, what do you do when you first wake up? Uh, well, as Walter normally does, he checks in with the the NOS network, as you so I politely put it. I believe I called it NOSnet, but anyway. That too. And this is, of course, NOS in your domain. But you're also in contact with Anarch NOS around the city. Um. Yeah, he would check in with the little NOSnet and... Uh, See what other happenstances going on. Anything new has been discovered or what have you. Uh, nothing big went down during the day. Uh, there's lots of news reports about the, you know, the police getting reports of, you know, gunfire and this, that, and the other. And, you know, uh, car accidents, uh, a body or two was found, you know. Stuff has gone down in the city. Uh, nothing that would be alert alarming for us yeah not really you're just seeing you're you're just kind of picking up on the 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 remnants of stuff that you knew had gone on the night before mm. uh everybody you know everybody realizes this is, this is the cam's big push so everybody's kind of braced and tense uh but uh, uh does walter need to hunt or is he fine he should, um, but I shall double check his hunger. Yeah, I'm not too hungry. I'm fine. Okay. The GDO. Hi. You wake yeah. up? What you doing? Um, I think I wake up, and I think GDO wakes up and immediately goes to. Uh, start getting stuff for the ritual or ceremony, rather. Okay. Um, so you see him pick up like there's a vignette of him picking up a bunch of uh, like chalks and charcoals, but there's also stuff like other stuff like a, a small altar. Um, a lot of stuff of it is very much like Dia de los Muertos inspired. Versus, versus, like, you know, a traditional, like, blood circle or whatever that you would do in a ceremony. <clears throat> or a ritual. Um, and he makes kind of a makeshift, makeshift ofrenda. Um, and just has a skull that he puts on top. It's a little out of tradition, but sure. And what, is, um, what, what ritual is he trying to do here? Uh, he is do he's going to do the ceremony host spirit. Okay. But he's going to appeal he's appealing to to uh Gertrude first. And he he is is she here? Is she like making herself present? She appears as you're arranging all this stuff. Okay. And then um as she as she appears and and the ceremony is like he'll get a couple of candles and you know he has mostly the LED ones but he does have one actual like actual candle that's actually lit up uh, ah so uh are you, are you are you ready she doesn't look happy about it but she nods You get the impression there was 
some sort of sense, feeling of sensation that she got possessing you that that she clearly liked, but she doesn't like that she liked it, or doesn't like that she has to deal with you. To, to, <laughs> you know, where the first guy that you had possessed, you had just died, so it, you know, you know, feeling a live body yeah. again wasn't a big deal to him. Yeah. He will. He will uh, slice his palm, put it over his over his mouth, and it's it's a lot less, it's a lot less of entreating, and it's a lot more just the the motions as he does that, and he opens his mouth. I get a stain. Does that mean it doesn't work, or no? It it everything still works. I just get a stain because I I. Uh, got a um, critical failure on my on my rouse check. Ah. So not oh, only do I get hungrier, I also get a stain. Hmm. You just you're feeling a little bad about this. You realize the sensation of being alive that you know, you, you you're feeling like a drug dealer almost. I like you're taking absolutely advantage. Absolutely using her. But, you know, bad, bad crap could be going down tonight, so you kind of want to be prepped for it. Yep. And as she, as she comes in, I'll roll for it. Okay. And this is this roll is to maintain control, correct? This roll is how many scenes I have with her. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Which is a lot so far. One, two, six successes, so... That probably cover. That'll probably cover the uh, the night. Well, no, the night's gonna be two oh. sessions, so we'll see. Maybe maybe when you need her most, she'll flee. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe that's her plan all along. Give you just enough rope to hang yourself with. And then, yeah, I think he he holds on for now and and just. Thinks has the conversation inside of inside, where he's just like, "So you said you feel." Yes, I haven't been alive for a while. It's it's just it's something to feel the air on your skin again. Well, at least one of us can. She's a little confused by that. Uh, and then he and he picks up a weird Tupperware that has like some um, it's it's like it has like some smoke in it, but inside of it has the little um, the steel wool that's inside in, in there. Mm -hmm. That's just like emanating some smoke, and he gets that, and he like kind of puts it in, puts it in a pocket somewhere in one of his go bags, and he. He's very much getting ready for tonight. Uh -huh. The big push. Kyle. And Eric, the only thing you really missed was us doing the re doing our, you know. We were yeah, we so were late getting started, so we just we did the recap and uh Iola drew, drew a very positive card. Yeah, that I heard. Okay. Um, you were here with that I heard. Yeah, I, I got here right when you did the pull. Okay. Actually, the first thing I heard when I hopped in was, Iola, what do you do when you wake up? <laughs> yeah, she does. So. Um, I do not get hungrier. Okay. I am going to go find an animal to snack on, though. Do you have any wounds that need to be healed? Yes, I do. Are any of them aggravated? Two of them are. Oh, well, you can only heal one of them, then. Yep, I know. <clears throat> and that one you would do automatically basically as you're waking up or before you woke up yeah superficial is gone and you ag first huh well you had to do ag first but I mean I guess not well I was rolling the one superficial I have just go ahead and get it out of the way okay uh okay so I do get hungrier, but I do heal one aggravated. And yes, I'm going hunting. <clears throat> uh, 
you know, when you when you're moving around, Shiloh gets up and is like kind of limping around. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Harmony had had fixed him from the worst of his injuries, but mm. you know, he's not at a hundred percent. Yeah, he'll he'll tell Shiloh that uh, he'll have to stay here. He has to guard the house. He makes an unhappy noise, but doesn't mm-hmm. fuss about it as much as he might usually. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Guard house is important. It means I can go lay down. Oh. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. So, hunting. Uh, three. Let's see. How many have we been saying it took for you to, uh... Take that one? I think that's minimum. Yeah, I think with the coterie bonuses we added in, I think three is the minimum I need. Yeah. Because we upped uh, Chost to five. Yeah, 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 okay. I see it now. Or I'm looking at the hunting hunting ground thing, so... Yeah, I I think three is the minimum I need. Yeah, because that'll take care of... Yeah, because it would usually... I think it would usually be four... With another uh, one or two for the lockdown causing issues, though I guess I would argue that that probably doesn't affect you, honey dear. But yeah. the the, the Charles thing knocks it down for sure. With three's enough, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna slake two hunger. Get me to one. Okay. So I still have one aggravated damage, but I'm as healed as I'm gonna get under my own power. <clears throat> All right, so uh, uh, basically, those of you that have run out and fed, uh, you basically just have enough time to sort of wipe your mouth uh-huh. before your phones start blowing up. That makes sense. Uh, you have a message from August that he has still uh-huh. not been able to locate Harmony. Uh, he's but he's he's a little concerned. He doesn't go into detail because you know it's over the phones, uh, yeah, the text. But uh, but he, he's he's getting a little concerned. Mm-hmm. Uh, Excuse me. Uh. Some of the other barons warn the ones that are close to Cam territory warn that there seems to be a lot of movement within Cam territory. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> you get a bit a message from Furman. Mm-hmm. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of details, but the uh, the other thin blood, the one he told you about, that's got a uh, uh, basically like a cousin or something who. Uh, who is also his sire uh-huh. uh, over in Moulton, uh, has basically told him to not be a very good night to just lay low. <clears throat> like, you know, it's like a message he got just as soon as soon as he woke up, you know, he had, you know, woke up, got dressed, that message hit, hits his phone basically telling him, yeah, you might not want to leave, leave whatever house you got, you know. Don't leave the haven tonight sort of thing. Uh... uh at, th- at that point, um, that message, Kyle will snapshot that message and then send it via burner to Ryder. Yeah, because you, you had told him how you knew about the... Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and he, he did ask if we got any intel, it'd be a good time to send it to him. So, seeing that... He'll uh he yeah he snapshot it, send it to Ryder with a following message. That's the guy. <laughs> They're saying that's the contact that we had. Let's see who else will be contacting you. Uh, 
uh, one of the, he's not really considered a baron. He's kind of got his own turf in the city, but he's not really considered a baron because it's, it's a small neighborhood. Uh, but, uh, but he sends a message out to the barons. Uh, he's over, he's over not too far from that, from that long stretch that cuts across the wildlife refuge. Uh, mm -hmm. There seems to be some movement across the bridge. You know, we all had y'all's big gunfight and you know, all that jazz. Basically yeah. coming in from those far baronies uh, to the east. Uh, the fallen baronies, I guess we could call them now. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Warden of the North uh, basically sends out a message. She's got some people, some of her people were stationed uh, further up the road, technically outside of Decatur, watching the roads. And there's some odd traffic headed, headed towards the city. Okay. Basically, it sounds like they're coming in from all angles. Mm hmm. Uh, then just you guys personally get a message from Miles uh -huh. telling you there seems to be a lot of movement uh, he's getting reports and, and Walter you'd be getting this from some of your NOS guys too uh, Miles is in contact with some of them so y'all are probably getting the same information uh, uh, but there seems to be a lot of movement over around the hospital uh, specifically the one across the street from y'all uh, parkway like you know extra vehicles in the parking lot uh some discernible movement on the roof you know nobody's cro nobody's crossing the belt line into y'all's domain yet but Message sent just to Kyle. You might want to close your bar. Yeah. <clears throat> Kyle is going to call... Um... Yeah, he's going to call the bar. Okay. I had to fumigate suddenly. Everyone go home. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, Zeke answers. Hey, Zeke. Oh, hey, boss. You coming in tonight? No. Um... In fact, it would be best if you closed the bar and got everyone out. Now. He's quiet for just a second, and then you think you, you just can and hear him under his breath. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, sure thing, I'll do it. I'll send everybody home. I don't think anybody will complain if I send them home with pay. Yeah, send them home with pay, that's fine. Just get them out. Uh, got a reason I can give him? Uh, say the boss's old contacts have spotted some gangs massing and there could be a fight. Good enough. He hangs up. At which point, he will pull out his phone, he will, uh, joint call, uh, both, um, Miles and the head security guy that he has for Woodard. Okay. <clears throat> Get them both on the line. All right. They, they both. Miles answers immediately. He's already up and moving around. Mm -hmm. uh, the security guy. Yeah, you had a, you had a direct number for him. You don't. You're not. You're not just calling them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He answers almost immediately too, because you know everybody's on high alert. Yeah. Miles, I need you to gather everyone. I've already I've already been pulling everybody. Good. Cuz we're not going to wait. Sweet. Um we never established a name for the head of this of Woodard Security. I don't think ever. <laughs> I don't believe we have. We just called them her security guys. <laughs> I think it's all we've ever called them. 
Oh, well, okay. Then he'll be... Uh... Fletcher. Fletcher. Cool. Fletcher. Deal. Um, say, Fletcher, once, once we all start moving, I have a task for you. Okay. Anyone on the roof of that building... I want you to resolve the anomaly of their continued existence. Uh, which building exactly? The one across the street. Oh, yes, we have noticed a little bit of movement there. Yes. Whatever armaments you have to reduce the roof of that building to non-existence, feel free to use them. I don't want any cover fire. Understood. I mean, we we don't have any really big ordnance, uh, but we've got some stuff that can reach out and touch people that, that, from over there. I've shipped some AP and incendiaries over in your direction anyway. Oh, those will be very useful. Enjoy them. Miles, like I said, gather everybody. We ain't waiting. All right. Uh, Out of character aside, does Egidio still have that rocket launcher? No, uh, that got used. Oh, okay. Yeah, that got used with the bridge yeah. stuff, yep. I think. Yeah. But that that got used when Egidio and I were behind enemy lines, and we waited yeah, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, like two or three cars to converge, and then Egidio just went, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> I think y'all used up most of your C4 by this point. Um. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think most of it's gotten used. Um, yeah, I know crates for sure that that Kyle got. I, yeah, I know, yeah. I know everything that Kyle had got used to blow up um, the NOS, the yeah. NOS, the, the decommissioned firehouse that was turned into a home. Yeah, yeah, I know everything. All the explosives Kyle had was used on that. Hopefully, he caught him in the blast. <laughs> But we'll see. Um, at that point, he will. Yeah, you know what? Screw subtlety. He'll call Walter next. Walter. Uh, oh. How many loyal undergrounders do you have? As far as I'm aware, I've got a good handful. Good. Have them sw have them sweep the underground for any infiltrators and eliminate all threats. Uh, Whatever means you need to use, make it happen. Understood. I'll let the Nosnet know to send whatever boys are itchy for doing something besides being behind a computer. And if the underground ends up being clear, feel free to swarm above ground across the street. Well, it is a good scare when something starts moving out of the morgue. Ideally, yes. And he'll end the call there. <clears throat> and then he will uh, head to wherever Miles said he's gathering everybody after that. No, first thing he's going to do, rouse. Not hungrier. <laughs> Shifts into a wolf. Playing with fire there. Yeah. Um, he is going into the. Uh, da, 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 where is the map? There is the map. He's going into the wildlife refuge. All right. So you oh, are beelining. Man! You are both beelining for Old Montgomery. Oh yeah. Sounds he good. said he's willing. He said he's willing to join in. <laughs> All right, what are the rest of you doing? And, and uh, I assume Kyle is notifying everybody else. Yeah, he's... Um, before he shifts, he'll sound a message saying, going for the old man. <laughs> Thumbs up emoji. 
I was basically very bold of you to to go ahead and think that. But anyway, uh, Walter will do as instructed and uh, uh, go across the NOS net and basically in colorful vampire cant mm-hmm. as the more combat oriented NOS that if they're feeling bored, if they would it got some free time this by say the uh the basement could use a little bit of spring cleaning yeah the nos of your domain specifically you know the ones you could basically order out there you know pretty pretty uniformly uh respond kind of with an affirmative Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. you know one or two that monitor a lot of the cameras around the domain you know you're you're not stripping your all your surveillance guys, but oh no no no! I'm I'm specifically stating like any of them that's more combat oriented and don't want to sit and do surveillance. Yes, by all means, that invitation is to them. If they're more of a surveillance and don't want to get in it, involved in anything physical, hey, Walter ain't twisting your arm. If you don't want to, you ain't got to. He just so, wants uh... at least he just wants some hands or some bodies moving around to again check the basement, as yeah. it were. So yeah, you have some security guys are down there all the time, but yeah. So a bunch of them are coming out to kind of sweep the storm drain sewer system uh, in the domain. Uh, you know, and some of them already kind of work for miles. So the 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 knowledge that if they're clear, they're going to go across the street is going to spread fairly quickly. Mm. Emma, what do you do with this knowledge when it comes comes across your phone? If there are people on the roof of the hospital, she's going to go to the roof of the mall with possibly some kind of binoculars or something. Okay. Ah. And she's going to watch for a little bit, kind of see who may be the one in charge, anything like that. And she is going to share the senses. All right. Uh, first, give me a wits awareness, just to see what you see, see who you spot. Turn on heightened senses. Yeah, I was gonna do that. <laughs> I've had my all specs in. Yeah. Like I said, next week I'll remember all of my like stats and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'll have it down perfect next week. Pigeon noises. Coo, coo, coo. Because I'm not good at those. Uh, four. Okay. Looking across the street with binoculars, you see... Uh... So, well, one, you see somebody else with the binoculars. I looked at him. He looked at me. I looked at him, and he looked at Actually, me. you're looking at him, and it's a shot in the dark, but you think he may be looking at your office. There are guys with large yeah. rifles on either side of him. You know, they're crouched down low, so like somebody from the ground wouldn't really notice him. Yeah. Uh, and there are several people with, with these sorts of rifles up there. But, but so specifically, the binocular guy, there's, there's one on either side. And yeah, you, you get the impression they're paying attention more towards where your office is than, than anywhere else. She'll do a quick, hey, I got to do some fumigation at the office tonight. Don't drop by. It'll smell foul. Uh, but also looking around further back, because you're up, uh, well, you're up basically a couple of stories, but he is not as tall as the Parkway uh, Hospital. Yeah. Uh, but where most of these guys are uh, not wearing like full combat fatigues or something quite that obvious, but they're all dressed. They're all dressed in dark clothes. Uh, nothing. Nobody up there that's you know armed is wearing anything fancy looking. Uh, the only guy that's wearing something fancy is a, is somebody that's in like a full suit. And when you see him, you know, you see him walk out and one of the guys 
Uh, the guy with the binoculars sets the binoculars down and goes over and is talking to him. She is going to share the senses with binoculars guy. All right, give me that roll. I'm just linking in there so you have the um, yeah, yeah, yeah. information. It's not correctly named because you're not actually sharing the senses. You're more like stealing them. Well, they don't know I'm sharing them. It's like a... Well, they're, you know. they're, they're sharing their senses with her. It's fine. It's, it's, fine. it's like when you steal someone's Wi-Fi. Okay, he also <laughs> say resolve. Wits resolve. All right. <clears throat> I mean, uh, you're not wrong in that aspect there. No. no, he can, if he figures out that she's in there, she can, they can have a wits resolve. How would they know? Uh, b -b 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 I think there's aspects powers that allow that. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. Since the unseen, right. basically. Gotcha. Uh, if the person she's possessing got it, or if somebody using that power is looking at him. Mm. I got a four. All right. The difficulty is a three. Mm -hmm. So you settle in. You're staring at this guy. Uh, Did anyone happen to follow her up onto the roof? There's some of the mall people up there. Okay. <clears throat> no, they're they're getting ready with their own little sniper rifles. Alrighty. Uh, Fletcher is up there, kind of uh, running, running the operation. Mostly, they're taking shelter behind like air units and stuff. Uh, but you're looking at you're you're looking at a very uh, well dressed man. You know you're catching mid conversation that he's asking you know uh, the person you're you're inhabiting is telling the other guy that did there started being some some uh, movement on the mall roof. Uh, so he's pretty you know he's pretty sure they know we're up here. Uh, we're higher up than they are, so they should give us. They should give our snipers a little bit of an advantage, uh, whenever we charge across. Uh, but it does mean that they that they won't be able to offer as much cover fire when we cross the street or when we cross the belt line. You know, the two basically the groups of snipers will be effectively neutralizing each other. You know. Until we can pick off enough of them that we can free up some of our guns to. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been no, no movement at the office tonight. Uh, the well dressed guys, I guess, they're not dumb enough to. Uh, to go somewhere so open and so you know that we're so aware of uh, during an actual push. She'll be repeating this out loud so that Fletcher can hear. Now I need you to give me... Oh, wait, no. You don't have to give me anything yet. Hang on. Suddenly the well-dressed man's like... Uh... I realized this guy used to doesn't have a name either. Daniel, stop talking. To which the guy you immediately responds with, uh, what, uh, what, why, Caleb? Oh, shit. Of course. That'd be too easy. Uh. What is the name? Yeah, the Tremere. Mm -hmm. And he tells the guy, someone's inhabiting you. Uh. I forget which ability is sheer sense is part of the aspects, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not a power he'd be unfamiliar with. It's not a salubri specific thing. No. Uh, and he starts telling the guy, right. you know, Ghost? like giving hints on kind of how how to try to force her force her out. She, you know, it's the. Uh, 
Oh wait, no. I was about to use. I was about to just have him describe you as a such a baron, but he actually says it's the Salubri Black Baron. Because that's not a secret on that side anymore, for reasons. Uh, and he starts kind of coaxing the guy on how to, you know, push you out. It might not be the Salubri Baron. Malkavian also has all specs. If I remember right, he sees you as almost an image over top of the guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doesn't it say says to be about noticed. them seeing... It says to be noticed. Fair enough. Yeah. But I like the idea of him looking at it. Just three... He has a... Th- the guy has a third eye imposed on his forehead. You know, that would be enough to do it. That alone would be enough to do it. All right, so it was Wits Resolve or Wits, uh, yeah, Wits Resolve. Wits Resolve versus Wits Resolve. Ooh, not great. He only got a two. I got a five. <clears throat> uh. So he, he's he's sitting there, you know. You feel a little he, bit of struggles. He tries to force you out, but he, whoever this guy will, is, he doesn't know what he's doing as far as that goes. However, pull out that way. If she needs to later, she can still tap into him. She isn't like being shunted from him completely for the evening. No, that's fair. She's just gonna, cause he, the guy's not gonna say anything else around that guy. Okay, so you pull your senses back. I'm back. One child. She's, happened. Huh. she's gonna. Yeah, you know, she told uh, Fletcher or every that is what's Fletcher, right? Fletcher is head of security, yes. Yeah, she told Fletcher everything that happened, and she's going to go find Ada and ask him, or ask her if she knows anything about Caleb, and that Caleb's across the street. All right, so you are traveling down to the mall. Uh, Egidio, what do you do when you get this, the information that about the, you know, the orders Kyle rattled off? I was a full, like, not seen ago, but there's been things going on in this scene. I completely blanked on what the orders were. Oh, you, you're talking about, you know, gather, you know, having Miles gather everybody, and they're going, you know, we're not waiting, we're going across oh. the street after him. Sure. You, know, um, you, you, had, you have finished, uh, you had finished up your ritual, you were packing your go bag when this information came through. He looks at it and goes, okay, and it just continues going. He continues packing for a little longer. Um, make sure to have that Tupperware, like, on, on a, on, like, his side, in, like, a pouch. Uh, and I think that building that they're on is a hospital, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, Gio. I think he just sneaks that way. Okay. Respect. <laughs> like going straight across the street already? Or like, you know, just over the... Basically meeting up no, with everybody. It's a long way. It's a long way around. Okay. But yes, effectively just going across the street. Ah, uh, let's see. Home, the long way round. Okay, Parkway. Parkway is definitely taller than the mall, but it's not just way, way, way taller. He's got a yeah. couple, of, couple of the highest points. Got a couple of stories on the mall. Okay. Uh, a little bit of stuff. Wait a minute. How tall is that building? But, yeah. <clears throat> All right, Iola, you're behind the Waffle House. Or, you know, you mm-hmm. were. You're... When all this information comes through about not like not going to the office. Uh... Um... I find that a bit weird, of course, but she's not going to question. 
Um. Hmm. What was the information we got from Kyle? Uh, uh that, that we're not going to wait. He's gathering everybody to basically make a push across the sh across the street. All right. Uh, and she's going to be like, and where are we meeting? Uh, uh, Miles responds with that he's gathering everybody behind them all. And uh, she will go behind them all. Okay. So you or start walking. Yeah, you look yeah. around the long way or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Was there anybody else? All right, and Kyle was. Were you were you riding your bike, or had you turned into a wolf to run across? Uh, wolf, because like he got this as soon as he was done hunting, so his bike isn't in the middle of the woods. <laughs> oh, that's a fair point. <laughs> so he is a wolf, and. And you at least have the advantage or, in wolf form that you can just cut straight. Yeah, he doesn't have to go along roads. And he can run at top speed without having to slow down. <laughs> yeah, endurance is not a problem. Yep. Now, do you avoid cam territory or do you run straight through? Hmm. I mean, if you literally go straight line, you'll be cutting, you know, cutting through some of the uh, uh, well, you, some of the area controlled by the hospital, you'd be cutting through some of uh, Stafford's. Uh, or you kind of skim along the top and stay mostly in Maddox. Uh, but it's a little bit longer trip that way. No, he's cutting straight across. Okay. And I'll make a stealth roll. Alright, do that. Being seen. I need to pull up the PDF. <clears throat> well, just you have a got normal, quite, ordinary wolf. You have got quite the chance. This is either facetious or. <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell you this they got a skull on their hunger dice. Ooh, well, actually, did oh. I even roll a hunger dice? This is a. Yeah, I'm still, still going to count it. If if they fail, I'm still going to count it as a critical failure. All right. Uh, I mean, they have a couple of successes, so. Huh. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. We were discussing before the game before you got here. Them. We were discussing that you know, the, the rest of the group was like, like I hadn't given had enough experience. This, this no, chronicle. No one said that you didn't give enough experience. All I said is that Blackjack could beat the shit out of Gideo. All right. Well, they got yeah. two successes. So okay, you never <laughs> see a member of the Camarilla running through this territory. I mean, you're not running through the hospital parking lot. You're not hitting, you know. Yeah, who's an idiot that would do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we will be in a second, but... <laughs> but, uh... You know, you're running through the house area and, the, and cutting across streets. And mm -hmm. You just, you know, anybody they got That's patrolling, really you're dog. just not running into. Works for me. Uh, and you make your, yep. your, your way to the, that southern part of the... Uh, did Old Montgomery have the northern part of the wildlife refuge? I don't remember. I don't think we ever decided just that he has one half and Hess has the other. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. He probably is another clear split. In fact, other than the two of them, nobody else is probably exactly sure where the line is anyway. Fair. But all right, you get to the you get to the refuge. Uh-huh. And, you know, there's a lot of spillover from the river. It's, it's very boggy, kind of swampy in some of those areas. Yeah. But Old Montgomery did tell him how to find him. Yes, he did. So, he, so. you know, you use a couple of landmarks he finds. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, 
about the time that you're debating whether to, you know, howl or do something to draw his attention. Uh, a figure actually just rises up out of the water. As in, like, animal or humanoid? Uh, oh, he's humanoid when he stands up. Okay. It's like he was crouching in. It's like he was in the water just deep enough that he could crouch in. You know, you're not sure how he stopped himself from bobbing to the surface, but, you know. Old kindred have his tricks. Yeah. <clears throat> He'll shift back, like, Montgomery. Kyle? And he steps out, just sort of, you know, shaking his head almost like a dog. And, you know, he's got fairly shaggy hair, and it's mm -hmm. water spraying out from, from his head. Well, uh, you did tell me to let you know when a fight was going to happen. Oh, tonight? Well, that was quick. Yeah, they're pushing from all sides of the city, and I decided, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to take the hospital from them. The one in the middle. Oh no, the one over the one over by you. Yeah, I could help out with that. Well, uh, it's that, or if you'd like, we got some word that uh, there's Cam amassing in the Fallen Barony across the river. From if you want to join some guys fighting over there, make no ever mind to me. I told you I'd help, so however, you, whatever you know, however you, you want me to help. What'd you say, sir? I think we should bring him with us. Okay, fair. Uh, well, honestly, since we're going to be attacking one of their, one of their, if not the Cam stronghold of the city, could use you with us, I think. Let's go, then. All right. And I guess we both shift and go. <laughs> Yep, he drops into a big wolf. I do not get hungrier. I too drop into a big wolf. And off we go. <laughs> yeah, so y'all are right back. <clears throat> Emma, you were crawling down. You're not crawling down. There's a ladder. <laughs> oh, well, you're keeping your head kind of down because there are snipers. Nobody's shooting you, but there are snipers over there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, head damn. Get your damn head knocked off. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, that'll happen. Ain't nothing that saves you from a bullet to that. No helmets. Not sure, vampire. Even then, maybe just in twelve four for a while. Well, it depends on the round, I guess. Uh, but yeah, they take you downstairs. Uh, the you know uh, Fletcher isn't escorting you himself. He's staying up top to supervise the troops. Uh, but he has one of the one of the lower level flunkies. You've seen him before. You probably helped heal him after the big fight inside the mall or something. Yeah. Uh, and they lead you down to uh, Woodard's office. Miss Woodard, was eight, Miss Ada? Ada um... tenses up when she hears your voice, but does it? Doesn't say anything. Does it? She doesn't move. You just see. You just see her visibly tense, and it's like she'll you know, do. She'll. She won't move any closer to her and just give her the nod of respect and otherwise fairly placid. Uh, um, and you see Wood Woodard's there. She's got, you know, uh, on her, she's got computer monitor set up. She's, she, she's watching, like, all the security footage of outside the mall. They will be making a push soon. soon. We gathered that from uh, Kyle's messages. Also, well, Caleb's we gathered, we may make, across the We street. may try to make the push first. But, oh, I'm sorry, what was that? Also, uh, Caleb is across the street. Woodard just kind of goes, hmm. Looks over at Ada. Ada's sitting there going. That's not great news, but we we knew he was in town now. Uh, Did you also tell him Kyle went to get old Montgomery? <laughs> Did he announce? Oh, yeah, he did announce that. She's. Uh... I'll let that be a surprise for later. Nice. Uh, surprise tool for later. 
I'm just imagining, like, where's Kyle? Two wolves show up. Hmm? You brought a friend. <laughs> you always have to get your dog a, fr- a friend, otherwise they just get very destructive. They get bored. As the two somebody... wolves seem to get very destructive. <laughs> As somebody whose partner has many dogs, that is not true. I, I read it somewhere. It's true. It's got to be true. Uh-huh. It's on the internet. <laughs> it's on the internet. Yeah, she's... How... Do you have any tricks to deal with him? That you could tell me or somebody else? Mm-hmm. I'm not asking you to go up against him if you don't want to. Yeah, he's about my age. I mean, we're... we. On paper, we should be close. But, of course, you never really know how good somebody is. Uh, but, yeah, I should probably be there just in case. I don't know how much countering I could do. but I could at least do the same sorts of damage he'd be doing. When are we, when are we crossing? I know Miles and Kincaid are amassing them behind them all. Hey, you know, when you say that, you say Woodard glance over at one of the monitors where you see it, buddy. Enough, of course, to kind of keep an eye on the borders, but a pretty good force there, and I believe Walter's working with some of the local NOS. Uh, I was seeing what other strings you can pull. Uh, Woodard looks at Ada, uh... Are you sure it's a good idea for you to go across? Are you, are you sure that would be safe? I mean, you know, we, we need to keep some people on this side to, uh... You can't strip the barony completely, or, you know, somebody can hit us on the other side. Something. Uh, she, she doesn't look not- happy with the idea of Ada crossing the street in this attack. I am not ordering you or... You know, telling you to do this as a bear, and I'm just making you aware. You are more than welcome to stay here and defend. It could be a good idea. You've lived this long, trusting your gut, I'm guessing. Just whatever your gut tells you. Uh, it is like, I, I, think it, I think I would, I think it would be best if I... If I went across. I don't have time to really set up any extra defenses over here. Uh, All right. And she looks at Wooder, you, you know, you know where, you know where, where the most defensible spots that I've constructed them all are. Uh, Woodard looks unhappy. Like, maybe, maybe we can discuss it some more. Oh, Leave you to do such. I'm going to go join the others behind them all. Yeah, so you leave with Ada just giving Woodard a weird look. She's gonna. She still has heightened sense and so on. She's going to step a little bit away and pretend like she's messing with something on her phone and see if she can hear any of the conversation. All right, give me a, give me a roll. Uh, what's awareness? Uh, yes. Now, if you get a hot sense, add to that, or does it just let you hear stuff further away? Adds all specs, I believe. That sounds right. All right, go ahead and give me that roll. Oh, you're you are. That is a five. All right. Uh, you hear what are still going? You know, hey, you know, they, they've got snipers and stuff. Yeah, you know, you don't know if Ken Cage there. If if Ken Cage there, surely he's got you know others from his coterie or his uh, not coterie, the Tremere Chantry. <clears throat> Kincaid or Caleb? Oh, I'm sorry, Caleb. I'm Wrong name. Uh, okay. <laughs> We've been sleeping on Kincaid. He wasn't brew high. He was Tremere the whole time. I mean, Kincaid is old. 
Or older, anyway. Well, he's not ancient. Or, he's not old Montgomery old. Yeah, but I think, like, you said he's, like, Ancilla old. Like, like, Ada and them. Like, he's been around for a while. Yeah, yeah, I may have. Uh, anyway. Uh, I mean, anyway, she, you know, she's given this sort of honestly half ass sounding, you know. Ada's just like, what is this actually about? What have you done? Uh, and what is to know? I, I haven't done anything. What are you planning to do? Uh, there, there, there's been an offer made. I think you're muted. Oh, I know. I'm just mostly yelling at myself and at the screen. Uh, like, this? Uh, and this is why Kyle told Walter to put surveillance on Woodard. <laughs> uh, uh, and it is like, oh, I swear to God, if you're doing this again. You almost got us both killed the last time. Uh, uh, when you when you cross Leonard. Emma, you may not know who Len Leonard is. But, it, you know, being new to town. But anybody that's been in town, he was the... Uh, he, he was Woodard's sire. He was the... He was the venture she tried to take out and failed to. But he got taken out by the Inquisition shortly thereafter. So anyway. uh, and basically, they, they start having an argument. That occasionally gets loud enough that, like, the other people out in the hallway, like, you know, can't make out, aren't making out the words necessarily, but can tell they're, they're arguing. Uh... And it's basically Ada giving her a dressing down. Because she's pulling this same crap. And this, you know, this isn't the time to do it. Even if the cam lets you back in. You're not going to get anywhere. They're going to keep too close an eye on you. Because they know, you know, they know what you've pulled in the past. And it's it basically... pull it twice. And, but, you know, basically it seems to wrap up with, with, uh... Ada basically, I'm going across the street, you know. You want to pull some shenanigans? I'll be one of them. You, you know. I'll be one of them. You taking out? You know. Uh, and then she stomps out, slams the door behind her, and heads the basically the opposite direction from you down the hallway. Mm. Like she is oblivious to, to the fact that you were out there. You know, like just blinded out. with rage. Uh, in the Baron chat, uh. Vampire can't for Woodard is compromised. You type that in and Woodard... Go ahead. You can go ahead and tell me. Woodard, Woodard steps out to follow her. Woodard, however, notices you. Oh, uh, Baron Hawthorne. Was, was there something else you needed? Could you repeat that? My headset oh. decided to have a wild moment there. Uh. When Woodard steps out, she sees you. She's like, oh, uh, Baron Hawthorne, uh, is there something else you needed? I think I dropped my phone. I found it. Oh, good. She doesn't look. She believes that for a second. <laughs> look forward to working with you tonight, Miss Woodard. Yeah, yeah, I think... Uh, she looked down where Ada, the direction Ada went. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Ada has decided for sure that she's going to uh, uh, go with the forces uh, across the belt line. We'll, of course, be laying down plenty of cover fire for you. I hope you make the correct decision. And good day. And <laughs> leaves. <laughs> Unspoken is, you know what the fuck Kyle's going to do if he finds out. <laughs> oh, once he reads his phone and... Once his phone stops melting with his, his chest. Yeah. Somewhere in the vicinity of the chest cavity. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my heart? Oh no, I got a, I got a text. Okay. Mm hmm Yeah, no. The moment Walter like gets that notification on his phone, whoever he had, uh, like keeping eyes on Woodard, he's just like, right. 
I'm going to need you to escalate that to plaid. Thanks. Well, and, and they've been very good at keeping up with her movements when she leaves the mall. They've had oh, a very yeah, hard yeah. time getting anybody inside the mall, though. Uh, know, some he of the... understands that part. It's just mainly a whatever paranoia level you were at, I need you to double it. Because app apparently uh, we're getting con some confirmation. She will swing back up to talk to... Oh god, I forgot his name again. Fletcher? Mm -hmm. And very serious, very much. I'm going to work now. Um... I want you to remember one thing tonight, Mr. Fletcher. You may work for Miss Woodard, but I am the Baron of this area. If it comes to down to listening to orders uh, of one of the Barons versus Miss Woodard, you will listen to the Barons here. I just want to reconfirm that that is completely and utterly crystal clear. Yes, ma'am. I 100% understand. And I when you when you had first climbed up, he he had been looking at something on his phone. And as he's as he's telling you, it's hundred percent clear he slid his phone back in his pocket. Mm. Would she have gotten? Would she have enough to catch anything that's on the phone? Or did he already like? Uh, the give me a wits awareness. Uh, he wouldn't particularly want you to see it, so I'll give him a. Uh... Oh, dexterity, leisure domain, I guess. It's not really a sleight of hand. Well, fair enough. Wall your phone. Give well, it's more about keeping the angle from it. You know what? I'll just do dex width. We'll do that. Four. That's only because it was a crit on a non-hunger or non-hunger dice. I don't know. Where's my being true? There we go. So Dex with oh, that's pretty good. You got how many? Four. Okay, he got three, so you're good. Uh yeah, it was a it was a text from Woodard. It just says, "Hey, eh, forget what we, you know, be prepared to defend, you know, to defend the uh, domain." Uh, oh, actually, she'd be careful on text. Uh, keep the security up around the area. Uh, Ada is going to step out uh, uh, with Kyle and Emma tonight. Uh, forget about that other thing we discussed. So Compel. basically, <clears throat> what now? Compel. Ooh. Charisma discipline. Uh, charisma and my <clears throat> dominate versus his intelligence and resolve. All right, his intelligence is quite good. I don't know if the current being has the husband. potential to sweat. However, he'd probably be doing a cold well, one. When she walks now. up and talks to him like that, he's got this look. You know, like somebody just walked in on him, you know, in the middle of, of something. Mm. I love how uh, it's rousing turned... charisma as well. I love how it's basically turned into, oh, mom's mad. <laughs> <laughs> Five. Um, Look, the mom's mad. However, the chocolate hasn't gotten out. There's still a chance huh. to live. She's not mad. He also She's got a five. Disappointed. <laughs> he also got a five, but uh, ties go to the player. Hmm. So you hit a strong will, but then you push on in. Explain what Woodard was planning quickly and precisely. There had been talks with Stafford. Uh, when he rejected his uh, proposal, he came to Miss Woodard with the proposal. Uh, 
she had not decided for sure which way she was going to go as of the last time she spoke to me. If I got the command tonight, I was supposed to help, uh, well, I was supposed to turn our snipers on your forces. Uh, if I didn't, well, then I continue, then, you know, I shoot the guys across the street. But uh, she's clearly well, decided to side with, with, with you barons. Then she's made the correct decision tonight. Let's hope that this continues. <laughs> Gives uh, him a little pat on the shoulder. Keep safe this evening. Uh, you, you, you too, ma'am. Goes back around, joys Miles and Kincaid. <laughs> As you're walking away, you hear him. You because know, some of the other guys up there heard this exchange. <laughs> and you kind of hear Fletcher look, you know, saying to one of them, Holy oh, crap, no wonder Ada thinks she's the scary one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a damn quiet ones. I always wear a damn hat. She's smaller, therefore closer to hell. <laughs> She's not that short. <laughs> Look at grief. Uh, good lord. Mm. Everybody thinks Walter's the scary one. No, not by a long shot. That's why Emma gets along with him so well. Walter's a kitty cat. Come on. He looks oh. screeching and like loses his skin. Oh, oh, just put that back up. You just hit that one right spot of Fester Pops. Oh. <laughs> Hate that. All right, but moving on. Wow, well, good, thing, good thing I'm dead, or that would be uh, nauseating. <laughs> Not for us. dead. So nauseating. Look at look at some point if we ever come back to this, I might as well just make a Nesferatu that's just straight up a a, a plague bearer of Nurgle. Let's just be honest. I have a clan that would work for you. Talk about that after session. Fantastic. It's just a Hikata. Alright, so Fair the rest enough. of you the rest of you were all eventually meeting up behind them all. Uh most of you. Hmm. Edgy is going for a walk. Okay, so Emma, you get back mm. there. Iola's already back there. Mm. Uh, you've got Miles, what's left of the Brute Squad. Because uh, they did lose a member or two when the Baron, when the Far Baronies fell. Mm. Uh, they'd lost somebody up earlier. Inquisitor. <clears throat> You're right. There's only about three of them left at this point. Uh, but Miles has got all of his other people. Mm. Uh, you also get a message from the on the Baron chat. The uh, the pack is moving to try to intercept the people on the bridge. Uh, yeah, so you know, so you have forces at work. Okay. Rat puts in something uh, cryptic about he's got a surprise for the br people on the bridge. Ooh. Yeah, but you don't know exactly what he's talking I love, about. I love, I love surprises. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It coming from us for Ratu, it can only you know. be something. Basically, you're getting these little cryptic things from all over the city where the other barons are dealing with stuff in their areas. Cool. Um, but how long does it take for Kyle and Montgomery to get there? Uh... I mean, moving at full speed since they don't have to slow down as wolves. Yeah, and full speed for a wolf is pretty decent. It's about 32, 35 miles an hour. Oh, for a wolf. Looking up on Google. 36 to 38 miles per hour, top speed. Okay, okay low ball. Some have been able to reach <clears throat> upwards of 46, but... Yeah, but of course, with, with natural animals, it's in short bursts. That's not an issue with Kyle or Old Montgomery. Yeah. Uh, Probably especially not Old Montgomery. He's probably got some, a little bit of uh, celerity, you know. But he's not trying to outpace Kyle, so. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, moving at, at least 30-something miles an hour. Mm. And, and just and cutting through, you know, cutting through yards and across streets and not really having to worry about uh, following the roads. Uh, yeah, you can get back across town pretty quick. Mm. You know, 10, 15 minutes. Cool. 
Uh. Agidio. I roll 12 successes on my stealth check. All right, and where were you headed to? That's a crit. Uh, to, to, towards the hospital, but like going, you know, shadows <clears throat> up, he moving uh, as subtly as possible. All right. Suddenly. And yours is not obfuscation. No. It's Taking just an undulating it's, it, path. I'm just very good at hiding. It's just, yeah, you, you just have essentially a jacked up stealth. With the explanation being that you rap. So let me see if any of there. Uh, Botters can spot you. No. Uh, oh, so close to a crit, but not quite. Lost a crit. So four successes, and you said you had how many? Twelve. Okay. Why do your all's dice roll so much better than mine? I rolled a success we, on all of them except for one. We, we all specialized into just weird stuff. That's well, true. that and as a wolf, my stealth dice pool is 11. Yeah, yeah, I knew the wolf thing. Really. So, like... Um, <laughs> is, as soon as he gets towards the, ho like, not the parking lot of the hospital, he's gonna, he's gonna, he'll get there and he'll just keep going and just kind of walk like no one, spot, no one knows what, he's look what they're looking at when they see him. And uh, when he gets where he thinks there's cameras, because hospital has to have cameras, mm -hmm. well, they uh, he's going to open the thing. And what does that, does that thing do? Uh, that disrupts cameras. Over how large an area? Uh, an area around me. It stays around me. Oh, okay. Uh, so... You would assume maybe the room that a GDO is inhabiting maybe a little bigger than that. The room, the hallway, uh, you know, we'll, we'll say the general area. So it, even if you're in a long hallway, the one at the end won't get you. Yeah. Um. So you can roll that. That's going to be, let me get the dice amount for you. That's, mm -hmm. that's on you, whether that works. Oh, that's right. Because you don't, you wouldn't know if it worked or not. Right. Uh. So that's going to be five. Seven dice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to pick up the right amount. How many hundred dice do you currently have? Two. Let me swap it. I don't know. DC is three. I can I imagine a judo with his jacked up stuff just getting up on the roof and just starting to like shove snipers off the roof. <laughs> like, off get you go. <laughs> he has to get in the hospital first. Yeah. He does have to be a little careful. He couldn't stand in the middle of a parking lot and wrap himself in shadow and not be noticed. Yeah. You know, in a well lit ah. area. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, that would be nine dice because I'm gonna. Oh. Alright, so one okay. more dice. Or. Two more. Oh, okay. Well, it's not it's not just y'all's dice that roll well for, for y'all. <laughs> and how many successes did you need to have? So a GDO doesn't know for sure that it worked, but but I probably spilled the beans. It's, uh, but yeah, he, he walks in and he um, he will just walk in like nothing, and um, I think what he does um, is go to the cafeteria first. So he'll he'll make his way that way in the hospital. So. If you want to go to someone else, because I know walking a hospital is going to take a while for a GDO. Well, as you're walking in, there's a lady near the reception desk. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We're, we're well, not closed, but, uh, you know, if you're here to visit a patient, that's not allowed right now. Because you, uh, uh, he has his mask. Yeah. He, he has his mask, by the way. Um, and he goes, oh, no, um, it, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I just need to, I just need to go use the restroom. I just have to pee. It's been a long night. Give me a manipulation. Absolutely. Because I mean, she literally just watched you. Well, she wouldn't have seen you until you were inside and probably yep. had to drop your shadows. But, but you're in the lobby area talking about, you know, uh, the restroom. So, uh, let's see, manipulation. What would the other one be? 
subterfuge? Yes. Alright. Good to I'm quite certain that you're lying. Considering you haven't had to pee in years. Yeah. Well. Or a few months at least. Uh that is two successes. Okay, that's all you need to do with a regular mortal. Woo. I rolled skulls on my hunger dice, so I am glad that worked. Multiple? Oh no, you say it's skulls. fine, I just got <laughs> <laughs> Hide her behind the, the receptionist desk. Hitman style, just over a oh, draped over a a, a, a crate. <laughs> just gets absorbed into the crate. No no. In Hitman you want to put him in the wine press. Yeah. Sure. That's an actual thing you do in one of the missions. I remember that one. <laughs> uh-huh. Never For a vampire, that might be actually beneficial, you know? Just get all the all the good juices. Maybe that's how the Tremere make their bloodline. Just <laughs> run it through a filter to get the chunky bits out. Unless you want it with pulp. <clears throat> Would you like your human juice with or without pulp? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but okay, she directs you over to the restrooms. Thank you. And he'll he'll walk that way. It's a vampire then... variant of OJ. <laughs> he'll go that way. Uh, he'll pretend to pee. He'll be there for like five minutes, look at his phone or something, uh, and then just go to the elevator. Okay. All right, Kyle. You at Old Montgomery? Uh, you mm-hmm. know, zip across the road. Uh, probably staying on Damble Road. Mm. You don't want to get too close to the hospital because you you, you know there's snipers up there. I, I yeah. think I think if you do send a text to the to the uh, the coterie chat, it just says I'm in. Is it just the gif from the Matrix? Yes. I'm yeah, in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, he ought to send him a selfie from inside the hospital. <laughs> Like walking to the elevator, you're in the lobby, you know, the name of the hospital's on the wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does he? No. No, no. His hey, guys, I thought we were meeting up over here. His camera phone probably wouldn't be working right now. That's true. That's true. So we just get a picture of the yeah. inside of the hospital. It's just pixelated. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> I mean, I'm a vampire, so I am, but. <laughs> But yeah, you run on this mass of vampires, and they just see two big wolves running. You see a couple of them kind of, you know, drop their hands to their side. And I was like, well, one of those is Kyle. Everybody calm down. <clears throat> Emma, I have a feeling I know who the other one is. She's just watching reactions for this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they shift back. You know, some of the younger guys, like the Brute Squad, no idea who this other guy is with Kyle. You know, clearly a gang, but whatever. Mm. Uh, but Kincaid and Miles is a stronger reaction there. Ada? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. She, she was there. joining. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. She's, out there. She's got like her, almost like a little medical bag. It almost like something a GDO would carry around. Mm. Maybe not as big as his go bags. but Yeah. Go bag has a lot of bricks in it that can be mistaken for cocaine, though. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but the, the old heads, people that have been in town a while, they, they react to the side of old window. Uh, uh, Ada just looks at him and goes, dog. To which he responds with the witch. Doesn't seem to be any actual uh, animosity there, though. They make out later. <laughs> <laughs> On the corpses of the enemy. <laughs> That's why she's crying blood. He left her. Yeah. <laughs> That would that would do it. Uh... Miles, you got everyone. Yep, I'm keeping just a very very bare bones few people uh, out to the west, just in case you know, in case those reinforcements from the uh, from Moulton show up. Uh, I've alerted Clint, uh, so if if those forces start to come through. You know, basically, they're just gonna try delay delaying tactics. You know, mm. 
speaking of, did he get a response back from Ryder at all? Uh, he has not, not yet. Oh wait, no, all you right. you run cross town a couple times. Uh, then yeah, probably about the time you were showing up. Uh, uh, let's see how would Ryder respond because because the werewolves are probably doing their version of the of the kind of vampire cant sort of stuff y'all been doing. Yeah, I mean, uh, they call it the veil instead of the masquerade, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what my book says over there. <laughs> uh, yes. I'm drawing such a blank on how he worded. Uh, yeah. Basically, he tells you the... Uh, yeah, he, he, he's got permission to lead a little welcoming party for you, for your friends. Or to put together a little welcoming party for your friends. His response will be, enjoy the festivities. I'll be throwing a party of my own. Um, so, y'all are there? Y'all are... Well, Horses are arranged. The, you know, Miles has got uh, enough vehicles... You know, vans. Uh, some of them have uh, crudely welded on armor. It's like some of them have a little bit of scrap metal. Like, you know, ta just tap, weld just tap <laughs> welded onto the top of like a van. I mean, if it works, it works. Uh, King Kay's like, eh, I don't know how much it'll work. Redneck armored vehicles. They said snipers. I put some metal on the roof. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. You know, not all the Just vehicles them. have that. <clears throat> They've got about two vans with that. So he, Miles is like, figure those will be our, you know, be our leading edge. Right. I made sure to give a morale talk to the folks on the roof. Ah, good. So that was that issue was dealt with. Yep. Good. Ada's watching the two of you very closely in it during this conversation. Like, you know, she didn't notice that Emma had, had stayed behind. Just to oh. Ada. Don't worry, I didn't steal anybody's souls. Maybe scared it out of them, but I didn't take it. Okay. She's like, yeah, I can live with that. That was probably deserved. Better her than me. Debatable if the rumors are true, but uh, yes, I, I guess I'm glad she resolved that rather than you. Uh, when all right, this is all over, on. I assure you, I will keep a very close eye uh, on her to make sure this sort of thing does not happen again. That'd be appreciated. This is why you were appointed into the position you were in. Okay, enough flirting. Let's go. <clears throat> Ada actually seemed a little relieved after the conversation. Okay, no, okay. It doesn't sound like you're going to kill her as soon as it's over. Right, right, good, good, good. Though she still seems a little pissed. Not at y'all, but... I mean, Kyle's mad, too. <laughs> but, right, so... As it stands right now, uh, from what we know, the cam are attacking from all sides on the city. Uh, more than likely, from intel received, the garrison at the hospital will be assailing our domain. My plan is to hit them first before they can fully mobilize. Take the fight to their end and leave our domain out of it. Um, depending on how things go, uh, we might be able to recall some of our forces you sent to the East Miles as... Uh, my friends are throwing a nice, welcoming surprise from the out-of-towners. Uh, he had seen some of that. I mean, he's not he, hes not technically on the Baron chat, but, you know. You get the impression some of these security guys keep in touch with each other, too. Mm. Um, well. Suffice it to say, uh, no one should be leaving town for a little while. There's a werewolf pack out there. Fair warning. You know, Miles isn't surprised. He knew you, you could be planning that. Uh, some of the younger ones were like, 
oh, some of them are like, oh, that's all we need is, you know, is werewolves coming in on top of this. No, no, that's fine. After all, I gave them a target to hit. Kincaid smiles as he's watching, like, the younger ones have a reaction to that. But, you know, there had been rumors of you running that pack through the through the town already, so, you know. Mm. You may be building now, a little bit of a rip. As things stand, Walter is currently scouring the bowels of the city for any infiltrators. Um, once that's done, he and his forces will be joining us from under underground and to prevent any escape. I said the same thing to the snipers and to Miles. I'm going to say the same thing here. I don't want any of them to live after this. I want us as a unit to rectify the anomaly of their continued existence. Kincaid turns to his people, or to the rest of the... For you slow ones, that means he wants them all dead. <laughs> like a real dead, not walking around dead like we are. Someone goes, oh. <laughs> yeah. One uh, smart ass that, does that. The rest of them are just kind of looking at him like, yeah, we, we got it. <clears throat> Montgomery, you want to do anything on this? You just run it with us. So something specifically you want me to do? You want me to... Uh... Planting well, people whenever I run across fucking them. Vampire. Um, and what are we doing about the kind that are in there? Anyone want to pull a fire alarm when we get in there? Oh! Did you actually check your phone finally? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's right. Egidio is in the hospital right now. Um, <laughs> as Kyle says that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Text something. Hey, could you make sure? Uh, make sure to clear out the dance room before we get there. You know how rowdy these parties get. Thumbs up emoji. Right. I go. For, I go catch a fire alarm. But... Well, uh, if I understand this correctly, um, Ajidio is probably going to pull the fire alarm and clear the kind out. So. More than likely, there will be none in the building, so go wild. And if any do see us, we've got people who are good at the mental arts that can wipe their memory later. Alright, everybody's just kind of waiting on the order. <clears throat> I'm closer, y'all to the hospital. We're on the other end of the mall. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not too far. Were... Yeah, yeah. No, especially not in vehicles. Uh, so Ajidio will then go pull a fire alarm. <sighs> All right. Havoc hey, erupts. Awesome. Everybody? You have an overstuffed hospital that now is convinced they need to get everybody outside. Yep. I am turning off heightened senses. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're probably the first one to hear it. Yeah, she's like, okay, alarm's going. All right, that's our cue. Everybody starts piling into vehicles, you know. The brute, brute squad is on their bikes, and several of the other brute are on bikes. Uh, mm. Kincaid hops into one of the vans, drive it, Miles hops into the other. Uh, if we all don't survive the night, I'll see in whatever hell we're damned to. Oh, you'll be fine. The rest of us will be damned. That's a Chuckle. stereotype. Yeah, she's like, go talk to Fletcher later and gets in a vehicle. Montgomery, race you there. He smiles, drops into wolf form, and takes off in just a blur. Kyle also takes into wolf, into wolf form and takes off. <laughs> he doesn't have celerity, so he's probably going to lose, but... <laughs> He still He's takes hauling. off top speed. He's hauling. I'll be right back. I will even rouse dexterity if I need to to get some speed. 
It's 35 miles an hour. <clears throat> and you're literally, like, crossing the street at, at an angle. Mm. You know, it's not even half a mile. You know, I, I wouldn't waste the house. But... That's true. <laughs> but you take off. The engines crank up. Everybody's going. Uh... You hear gunfire from the mall roof start up. Mm-hmm. Uh... And then there's supposed to be some return fire, so the, the snipers have started shooting at each other. <laughs> yeah. Basically, basically, when y'all said go, that was also the sign for the for Fletcher and his people to mm-hmm. start basically cover fire. Yeah. Did we say that Jadio could have pulled the f- whatever fire alarms in the cafeteria? Oh, absolutely. Oh, was there anything you were wanting to do in the cafeteria? Yes. Um... I want to make it. I, I'm I'm intending to set a contingency plan here. Um, and so, Ejid- I'll rouse here for a sec, but Egidio just kind of focuses, and then exhales, and this wave of nausea just hits the entire cafeteria, even if there's no one in it. I'm going to use ah fuck, what's it called? Uh. Aura of Decay. All right, what does that do? Uh, let me browse first. Good. I will post it. Whoop. Even bricks start to decay. Oh, and now you smell. Yeah, he's gonna he's yeah. gonna just take this whole scene while they're coming while they're incoming to just do that. The intention is for when, if and when kind come back, that they eat it. They're they're going to be poisoned this way, and it's going to be difficult for uh, kindred to feed on them because that's how they. That is uh, one of the one of the things of ingesting it will cause this damage. Um, and then if a vampire gets it, it's bad for them. Oh, okay. Hmm. So there, there's a handful of staff in here that we're eating, you know, the night, night of the night crew people, uh, and a skeleton crew still working the cafeteria. Yeah. But they leave with the fire alarm. Uh. Give me a stealth roll to see if any of them spot you. Sure. I don't know why I'm all these are all baseline mortals. Law of averages, I should get at least two, but we'll see. Uh, three, four, five, six successes. All right, so yeah, you flip it down. You know, several several of them are starting to kind of hold their stomachs, look at their, you know, some of them are like looking at their food. I swear that lettuce went that wilted when I got it. Uh, you see, one of the one of the uh, cafeteria staff, or kind of like, I'll be right back. I got, I, I mean, we're got runs off. And then the fire alarm starts. Enough. Everybody kind of, you know, startles and jumps up. This isn't nearly enough to kill anybody. This is just get them sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make them unusable for consumption. You're fouling the whale, sort of. Yes. And then when he's done with that, he'll put the shadows back on and head out. Or go, go, uh, Probably just wait in the wait in the corner for for the uh, kindred to uh, kindred to arrive. Okay, so you're staying on the ground level, waiting on everybody to. Mm-hmm. All right, the rest of you go racing across the the roads. Uh, you know, basically out into the street, across you know the little turn areas, not paying a whole lot of attention to traffic laws. Mm. Uh, all while the gunfire is, is zipping overhead. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, you hear at least, you uh, inside the van, you hear at least one shot that dings off the top of that makeshift armor. Ken K glances back at it. Huh, it actually worked. Okay, fair. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I didn't have I didn't have the opportunity to like slope it like you're supposed to do in tanks. Uh, as you cross into the parking lot, though, uh, in a GDO where you're standing in the shadows, you're watching people coming out of, uh, uh, you know, various side rooms. Uh, some of them are armed a little much to be hospital staff. Yeah, yeah well, you know. Uh, you know, some of them were wearing, like, mock security uniforms, but uh, but they were heading towards the front doors. You don't see a whole lot of the mortals running around down here yet, but they're probably scrambling to get to deal with patients. Uh... uh... Let's see. Old Montgomery will be the first one there. So, GDO, you see this colossal wolf. It's a little bit bigger than Kyle in wolf form, even. Mm -hmm. Just come barreling through the glass door, front doors, and just sort of bowling pins, you know, the uh, the cam that were closest to the door. Does you're on our side? Just say that to himself, but still in the corner. Just kind of like, huh? Anyway, I said like, Kyle's probably not too far behind him. <laughs> not gonna lie. You get there before the cars get there. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So old Montgomery is, is, you know, a lot of people around. He's he's got when when you get there, Kyle. He's got one guy snatched up like a rag doll. Yeah, um, I do saw rolled... the aura active, so uh, they will be taking two at least two superficial as they enter. Or oh, that affects all the if they're if I they're kindred, it's... or if they're if they're not kindred. I don't know if they're ghoul or not. Oh, I got you. I got you. Uh, ah, it's probably a mix. And you see some people get a little wobbly as they as they run mm -hmm. run past you. Um, Kyle, as With he that, entered, I will BRB because it just not doing anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, he activated toughness and feral weapons. Okay. And he's using his he basically he's identifying the closest target that is armed basically, and he's just. <laughs> All right. Give me a roll. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Ah, uh, da 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 da. da. Wow. What'd you get? Really? Not a single success to be found. All of them. What? Yeah. The dice are wanting to tell a story, and so far it's... So it's any fun. anything fun on your hunger dice? No. Literally, everything is blank. <laughs> it's a flat zero across the board. Well, the guy you're going that's... after critted. Oh, lovely. Oh, no. uh, so that's <clears throat> two, four. So he got five successes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm bring up the weapons thing, because he is armed with... Do, 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 do. Uh, 
You got this, socks. I believe in you. All right, he got a he's got a shotgun. Hmm. That's, That's not ideal. I missed. He got five successes. Uh, my Kyle dice. Kyle rolled an absolute zero. On huh. a combat roll. Yeah. Out of the pile of dice I rolled, every single face came up blank. You know, willpower we rolled? I'm not spurning that much willpower to re-roll that. Fair enough. I mean, some successes... Considering we're assaulting a main compound, I'm probably going to need that willpower for, like, frenzy. Fair enough. All right, so that's eight and the successes. Tremere and the rafters. Okay. So um, I rolled to see if he was using dragon breath or not. You lucked out. This guy's just got a shotgun. So <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, dragon breath wouldn't add the damage. It'd just be that five turned into. That's aggravated. true. That's true. Um, that would probably be worse than taking eight superficial. Yeah. So because toughness is active, that eight is automatically reduced to five. Okay. Because I subtract three outright. All right. And then that is halved. So you are taking three. Okay. <clears throat> I have taken three. So you charge it, you, you dive at this guy, and maybe you slip on a little, you know, uh, a little uh, gore that was on the floor oh. from from. Montgomery, maybe you just mis mm. misjudged the, the the jump a little bit, but your jaw snapped down, you know, a few inches from him. He managed to take like half a step back and just pepper you Point real blank. good across one side yeah. of the face and across the shoulder. Okay. The dice giveth, the dice taketh away. Mm -hmm. They gave me a four crit stealth roll, and then the combat roll is flat nothing. <laughs> Is what it is. So why don't you use the dice roll? The dice roller loves you. The dice roller has never loved me in any game I played. The last game I played in Roll20, like when I was using the dice roller, very first combat, round one, insta dead. Nice. Like fold and nothing. One. Level <laughs> one. Actually, I was a crow at the time, but whatever. <laughs> All right, Agidio, you said you weren't doing anything. I'm just watching. Okay. He trusts two wolves and the might of of um, the Anarchs to come by and do do good. Um, he's gonna scurry over towards the elevator and go up it, and just head up to rooftop, or as close to rooftop as he can get. Okay. We well, can get up to the top floor. Oh, the yeah, very top floor is probably top offices there. mostly. No, no, no. Question. No how much of a good idea is that with your aura of decay active? You don't, you don't know. I don't Would know. You do Judio things. I don't know, but also I can deactivate. It, it only lasts for a scene. Ah. Okay. And the rest you of you are, are pulling up in the little caravan of vehicles. Uh, uh, you see cam folks piling out of the building. Uh, not the big main entrance. That glass is busted down. You can see the two wolves, and you hear shots going on in there, and people screaming, and you know. But some of the smaller entrances, you know, people are coming out, so there are people Emma out there to you. Emma will suggest get somewhere where we can get out of the vehicles under cover. Remember, snipers on the roof. Kid Kate's like, understood. And he aims for that main entrance that Montgomery and Kyle went through and she cuts. <laughs> what a badass. <laughs> yeah. Well, it turns up the radio. But to put it in perspective, we told a pile of Bruja we're going on the attack and we're attacking a Cam stronghold. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, and they are. I'm here for it. This little thing the did. entire hospital burns down. No one survives. Is that hey. hospital still there? Parkway, yeah, Parkway's still there. 
Okay, good. It's just it's just part <laughs> of uh, <laughs> it's it's just part of Decatur Morgan now, but which is all just owned by Huntsville. But it's still the Parkway campus. Slowly but surely, we're enveloping Decatur. <laughs> Allegory for uh, this campaign that we're running, actually. <laughs> All right, so, and you see, you know, you see the guys with you start splitting off. You know, the Brute Squad and some guys head over to to one of the other entrances, and you know, they start exchanging fire. Mm. Both the vans right up through that through those glass doors. Cool. And, you know, they don't go too far in, but they get up. Uh, you know, Kincaid's van is all the way in the building. And kind of, just kind of <laughs> right inside and whips over to the side to let people out. You know, knock, some of, the, knock some of the chairs in the waiting room around. Or in the lobby, I should say. <laughs> and the other one just pulls up enough that, that you've got from the from the overhang over the, the kind of the front walkway of the building and a little bit in the building. Now, enough that nobody on the roof can shoot at you. I just imagine, just like after Emma's like, get some place with cover, Kincaid, say less. <laughs> and then through the building with the armored van. I mean, this saves us some time. Mm. <laughs> Kincaid's like, don't worry, I've scrubbed the VIN numbers off all these things. Boy, do they stick those numbers a lot of places. Yep. Pulls out gun, and I started blasting. <laughs> Do it. Uh, now, Walter, were you meeting them, meeting behind the mall with the rest of them, or were you going to be underground with the uh, Nos? They probably would have joined his fellow barons for this push. Okay. But he would have he would have of course let the message known if you find nothing, do two things. Set traps ambush. I mean Achidia is already halfway there with set traps. Uh -huh. Well Walter knows that if anyone's going to try and escape from down below, he wants it to where they regret that choice. Mm -hmm. If they can. All right. Up till now, you know, from when you first sent them out, to up till now, they haven't really found anything much. They've killed a few rats, and if you know that they suspected were being used as as uh, visuals, you know, yeah, they were being seen in or whatever. But uh, but some of them are already kind of making their way. You know, some of them are already inching closer to the closer to the hospital. You know, in the underground. Uh, you know. One of them's like, you know, we we expect to make some resistance when we get close to the bottom, but we should be able to keep whatever subterranean forces they have occupied. Yeah, he just does something good by say keep them from getting out. And if you if you take care of the resistance, move on up. Roger, Roger. It's literally a, it's a gif, gif of, of one of the Star Wars. Yeah. 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 Oh, vampire can I mean, he really, I, it not... should be young vampire can't because the older ones aren't going to get any of this. I don't understand these pictograms they keep sending. All right, but everybody in the lobby. Um... Emma, Emma was going to start blasting. Yep. Right, give me a roll. Just next firearms for all the rolls for firearms this time. Uh, yes. And she is using, uh, you know, the good stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured y'all are all using the good stuff. One of those smoke them while you got them. Uh, five. All right, they got three. So plus, I think it was four for the gun, and 
any additional for the incendiary. Yeah, so plus four. You had, uh, that was two successes, you had more than him, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, uh, heavy pistol is plus three, I'm okay. sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's six. All right, so you get, you get out and start shooting, and you see somebody go down. Was it a kindred? Was it a ghoul? Who knows? But it was some other jackass with a gun, and now there's less guns pointed at you. She'll unpack that all later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also wearing the leather jacket armor they got earlier in the campaign to help reduce aggravated superficial. Yeah, Kyle's a wolf or his flak armor would be doing something. <laughs> well, if he changes back to a person, he'd have it. I'm assuming he put it on before he became a wolf. This was the night where shit was going to go down. Yeah, he put it on before he went hunting. <laughs> Iola! Hmm? What would you like to do? The vans have just pulled into the hospital. Like, yeah. in, literally into the Pulled bed. in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's going to start a blasting. Fine. Uh, is, does she say firearms dexterity? Yes. And I have specialty with pistols. So right. that'll work. Do I add any extra dice to that? Uh, or specialty is what? One extra, One dice? extra dice, yes. Okay. Yeah, they got five successes. And of course, they're returning fire on y'all as y'all shooting them in. So. I'm not keeping up with individual cam. I'm treating them like a horde creature, sort of. Eight successes. Jesus Christ. Wow. I got three tens. That'll do it. All right, so that's eight for you. You're, you see, you've probably got one of the plus three guns as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is like the uh, nine millimeters or whatever. Oh, and you're using the incinerary. Yeah, that's important to keep up with. So that's eight, nine, ten, eleven minus their five. So that's six ag you did to somebody. So they, they drop down behind some cover. You're not sure if they're dead, dead, or just, you know, just cowering after that devastating hit. Uh, oh, Walter stepped away. So we'll get what he was doing uh, when he gets back. So we'll jump over to a GDO. All right, so. Egidio is going to very slowly go over this top level where the offices are um, and just go around, go around it walking um, and intending to poison more of this well, so to speak. Uh, you hear somebody on the phone. Look, it's a false alarm. Somebody just pulled a, oh uh, no, just pulled the alarm. There isn't a fire. Leave the patients in the room. Yes, I know about procedure. And he starts talking about, you know, how... Uh, over, you know, overpopulated is not the right word, but basically, you know, they've got, they've got more patients that they can handle. They don't have enough people here here to haul them all out. You know, he's he's mm -hmm. he's aware of what the actual procedures are, but it's a false alarm. You know, basically, he's like talking uh, mm -hmm. lower ranking, apparently, people into not disturbing sure. the patients. Uh, but as you glance into that office, you know, you got the guy, you know, he's in, you know, he's clearly a doctor. He's in the medical stuff. But there's somebody, there's somebody else uh, dressed very differently, kind of standing behind him, nodding as he speaks. Interesting. You know, you got to remember the cam's got this hospital on lockdown, so they've got a lot of control here. 
yeah, well, uh, yeah, I will continue to, uh, just kind of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna carefully walk around. My intention is to get all of the kind that are in this area kind of down with the sickness, as it were. Wow. There's a few more people up here in the office. Uh, it's not just a ton this time of night, you know. Mm-hmm. Most of the folks that are here at night are going to be the actual nurses and night shift doctors. Yep. Um, and that's even better because they will, they will, they they go to multiple patients theoretically. No. Uh, and then when he's done there, he'll circle back and he'll. Finish with that, and then he'll attempt to go up rooftop. Back, oh. go to the rooftop. Well, it'll probably take you. Yeah, um, the, it'll take you a little. Yeah. You know, you're, you spent a little while walking around. Go ahead and give me a stealth roll mm-hmm. while you're up there, just to see if you need to. Absolutely. Kindred up there. Well, the kindred that's up there. Notice it. Yeah, chances are not good. Four successes. Uh, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight successes. Okay. That's another crit, but I also have a lot of dice, so it's going to keep happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're very stealthy. Mm-hmm. And this guy doesn't have, like, all specs turned on or anything. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when he finishes that, like, rotation, that'll probably be the, the edge of where, when he starts to go up to rooftop access, is when he'll... Disable the plague wind, so to speak. Okay. All right, back down in the. Uh, uh, I'll go to the top lobby. Level. It smells like shit up here. Walter gets a whiff of that. It reminds me of home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot, Walter. You didn't go last round because you were you stepped away. So what are you doing down there as, as all this chaos unfolds? You, you see Emma and Iola both drop somebody. Uh, Kyle, well, you weren't there when he took his took that blast from the shotgun. But... Uh, I mean, at this point, it's all hell's broken loose. Walter's probably not worried about not being seen. I mean, of course, he is obfuscative, but... Ba- Basically, he's going to uh, he's going to act like a a bruja for a moment. <laughs> In the regards of like, as soon as the gunfire is breaking out, I'm sure someone's done whiz by, and he's just done broken obfuscation. And it's like, come on, brute squad, let me show you how this gets done. Just soaring leaps over, just ready to just tackle a motherfucker. <laughs> if not, at least sucker punch him as he's coming down. You got it. You. Um, it's a shame you couldn't take that power that lets you like cause a shockwave when you get up from your soaring leap. Uh, be nice. All right. So you, the game for the player's book to come out. You basically sleep across the room doing the Macho Man elbow drop on somebody. Mm-hmm. Basically. All right. Give me a roll, Elizabeth. Let's see. What are the cards I need to pull here? Uh, real quick. What was the... Uh, three. Three, two. Alright, one rouse check. And service is... I'm good. Alright, fantastic. So, prowess is going to be active for adding some little extra damage. Which, I mean, it's three. So, that's going to be nice. Alright, so Brawl Strength, correct? Yes. You know what? I don't normally do this, but I'm going to do it for the funsies. So. Alright, that's fine. I'm going to Rouse Strength. Oh boy. So that's Except going to this one guy in particular, basically. But that's going to just take my strength up one more dot. Two more. Two more. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, it got uh, adjusted. If, if, you're, if you're looking at some of the uh, like notes that you have access to on Roll20. That not ironic because it sucks to get get a hunger for one dice. Yeah. yeah. So all those numbers. Okay, no. That, that's cool. If I say two dice that, or two points, that's fine. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I don't have... Alright, so that is one, two, three, four, and I'll reroll two to get my others. Fantastic. So that is a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dice. Alright. So seven successes. This guy got two. Oh. <laughs> he, he was watching, be careful not to get me shot. Whatever he was expecting, it was not Nos from above. <laughs> Dorito. <laughs> yeah. Dorito from the rafters. <laughs> His last thought, how does he jump like that? He clearly skips chair. leg day. And then, thump. <laughs> so he did eight damage. <laughs> well, seven, or well, yeah. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, yep, yeah. eight damage. Seven Sorry, minus two plus three. Yep. <clears throat> so he does that, and top, suddenly, oh. and, and, and you know, there's, you know, Miles and Kincaid and the rest of them, you know, there's an, ex an exchange of other gunfire, and then there's just a bit of silence. As you've basically got two badly injured kindred trying to crawl away at this point. I mean, you heard Kyle's orders. Oh. Uh, yep. And Kincaid, uh, Miles, and there's people just walk up and just, you know, just back of the head. Uh, I'm just imagining that they're just like, no wonder they're the Baroners. They're the craziest ones of all of us. Uh, Miles starts yelling for his people to kind of, kind of secure the area. Uh, one of them, you know, moving further in. Uh, kind of yells that. Uh, we we've got a few people in the cafeteria. What kind of people? Uh, looks like people. People. Look like kind. Like that's there's active gunfire going on, and and they're still there, just like eating. If that ain't fucking capitalism for you. I paid ten dollars for this. I'm gonna finish it. Uh, <laughs> well, they they push some tables up to try to keep the doors shut. You know, he tells you, you know, they're they're in, they're in a panic. Okay. You know, a couple of them are blocking the doors. Everybody else is moving like further, deeper into like the employee, like the like the kitchen area. Do they have their bowels attached to them right now? Well, they're. Video was it? They're, they may be fairly sick. That's a but weird not. question. You didn't kill these the mortals in there. No, 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 no. I'm just curious. I mean, just I can be sick as a dog if I hear a bunch of gunfire the next room over. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> you're 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 willing to bypass the fact which you yeah. feel queasy. You know, for sure. With a little adrenaline kicking. I'll feel queasy in a group. <laughs> you know, that's what the hospital is. Don't know if there's a back room, back door they may be going out of, or if they're just going to be hiding in the cooler back there. You know, it's something though. You go in, they're all hiding, and you're, like, trying to, like, find them, and you just hear, Ugh. Uh, Miles glances at, at, at some of you barons, is like, I suspect they won't be too big an issue, other than maybe calling the police, but that was, that was going to be an issue tonight, regardless. It doesn't matter, most of them are on their payroll anyway. Let's continue. <laughs> Alright, so y'all move forward, uh, Old Montgomery shifts into, you know, shifts out of his wolf form into human form. Still sporting the big claws, though. Mm -hmm. His eyes are glowing. As one does. How's Ada holding up? Uh, she's fine. She seems very non-pulse by all this. Uh, she has not done anything yet. Like, it's, everything goes silent, and then she climbs out of the van with her little... Her little bag. She's kind of watching. She's kind of watching where she steps, cause, cause, uh, 
Old it's Montgomery there, especially made quite a mess. Doesn't want to slip and give this runner a nice outfit. Hmm. Not that she's in one of her nicer outfits, but you know. And she's got basically a flat jacket, you know, on over the drift. Let's keep moving. Uh, Ada, hey, it's straight to the elevators like she knows where she's going. Do you need any backup? Or you got this? She's like, I assumed we were all headed, headed upstairs. I didn't know if we were taking the elevator or the stairs. I'm surprised they haven't turned off the elevators yet. She's like, that's a good point. Jadiel will wait by the stairs for everyone to come in. Now that he now that he has such a large lead from everyone else, he's like, alright, now I'll wait. Alright, so everybody taking the stairs? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Walter kind of goes a little bit ahead, tries to get that right angle and just leapfrogging up the stairs. Ba imagine basically him like Leapfrogging where he excels up, grabs, adjusts himself, jumps up again. Give me That'd be very handy. Obviously, you can make the leaps because you you've got the leaping thing. Uh... It, it's sticking the landing to do it again. Let's go with uh, athletics and dicks. Oh boy. Eh, it's not terrible. Ooh. Lucky me. One success on the hunger dust, but I got two tens on the standards. Ha <laughs> ha! So that should make it what? A6? That sounds about right. Oh no, four. Well, right, the two, the, the crit would get you two apiece, on, two for each die, yeah. so that's four. And that was the oh. only successes you had. And yeah. one hunger, but that's five. total five. Okay. Uh, right, is, right, is but the hunger dice was not part of the crit, so that's okay. Yeah. Right. I thought I was going to have fun. Is the, stair is the stairwell, or is it, is the stairs to get to the rooftop the same? Are they the same stairs as the ones where they're taking to go up? So if I look down, can I see this large Dorito jump up? <clears throat> no. The stairs they're taking will go all the way to the top floor. Yeah. Then the roof access is its own little thing. Yep, yep. Okay, just making sure. Uh... It's almost like they specifically made it where they, you know, you, somebody could just walk in the front door and up all the way to the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, Can't see that. So, Walter, you're leaving up with no problem. It's, it's just kind of, you know, grab the handrail here, spring up, grab the handrail on the other side. During one of those springs, uh, you see two kindred there, uh, or two people. Crouch down uh, with weapon like 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 you know where they could come up over and be shooting at somebody coming up the the spiral once they're on the other side. Basically, they're sitting there in ambush. Watch the ambush. <laughs> Counter ambush by the flying Dorito. <laughs> at your discretion, if I could attack them by basically once I've gotten <clears throat> up. And I'm like looking over the rail, like, oh, surprise. Just throw them over. I mean, that'd be fun too. Just grab them, just kind of fall down with them. Well, sure, you can do that. All right. They're going so to what can you? I mean, that's only fair. So, what would I be rolling to like kind of pull them over the edge? Uh, oh, 
Okay, so you're, 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 yeah, you're not so much trying to damage them as you are, well, damage them yourself, so much as you are grabbing and pulling. Uh, I imagine the main one would be strength. I just don't know what you would like as the other part to the equation. Would brawl be more punching, or would I do athletics like wrestling? Brawl just kind of encompasses all of it. Yeah, I think you're right. Go ahead and just do your strength brawl. Uh, uh, it's, does, does potence add extra dice? I'll only to damage. Okay, okay. Unless just this is a strength-specific contest. Then add, yes. Add your potence. It does. Because you're not doing damage with this strike. You're, it's literally grabbing and pulling. So yeah, add your potence. They'll only take damage from the fall. Uh, well, How high up is it that, they, that they're that uh, they falling? Uh, they're about four stories up. Ooh. Ooh. Not the quite friends. Even, <clears throat> even a vampire is going to feel that. So they, they were more or less at the top floor. Yep. Yeah, it uh, says it. It has their potence rating to their unarmed damage value as well as to feats of strength. Yeah. That'll be an extra three dice, so I'll roll this and then I'll roll three more. Okay. Uh, no, it's you add three to the... Oh, just add three to the pool. Okay. Yeah. Well, that will make it easier for the math. So whatever you roll, add three to it. <clears throat> Alright, there's one of them. And there's the other one of them. So I got five successes out of my seven, so that leaves it to eight. One of them got three, one of them got two. So that means you have enough success that you you alter your angle and you land, basically land in front of them. You grab each one by the, like, the scuff of the neck, the, you know, their shirt collars or whatever, and just kind of whoop over the side. The rest of you are just, are just stepping in good. Old McGurmer has started running up the stairs fairly quickly, and you, ah! Oh, oh. <laughs> It's really, I just picture like this really bad B movie horror. B horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Wilhelm scream in yeah. stereo because there's two of them. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, are they still moving? Uh, one of them is not. One of them was, the way he's leaking and the smell, that, that wonderful aroma, that was clearly a ghoul. Okay. Yeah, I don't see Double tap. Uh, the other one is still, I mean, it, it, he, he clearly took a good thwacking, but he immediately starts trying to get himself up because he realizes he's in a bad situation. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Double tap. I'll say that and <laughs> Kyle's jumping him. <laughs> All right, go ahead and give me a roll. Okay. My Kyle decided. My, wow. Uh huh. Michael decided what? My dice decided to be the physical embodiment of the Sour Patch Kids. Terrible roll last time. They're sour. That's five sweet, crits this time. Oh, they're sour. <laughs> That's five crits this time. You want to avoid a shotgun? Nah. You want to just. Finish off this unarmed guy who fell four stories. Maximum damage. You basically. clamp onto his neck and just squeeze basically until a head pops off. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been a total of 15 successes or 12 successes with plus three damage. Unhalved. Yeah. Because feral weapons. He, even fresh, I think he was absolutely done with that. And he wasn't fresh because he just landed on the floor. Yeah. <clears throat> and now he is as a wolf run up the stairs. Agidio, upstairs you hear the screams. Because it's, it's fairly <laughs> quiet on it's fairly quiet on this floor, because there's not a lot of people. And you hear the guy in the office. What was that? Uh yeah, which, the and then his phone rings, he answers the phone. Gunfire. What? Ooh, excuse me. Uh and whoever the other person in the room is, just stay here in your office. Things will be fine. We will take care of it. Mm -hmm. why, can I, why can I imagine, like, this guy, probably Caleb, stepping out and, like, not even noticing a Judeo's there, and Judeo just, steak, 
<laughs> uh, I do have a makeshift stake. I know you do. But anyway. <laughs> we all have one because of you. Uh, I'm aware you have it. But yeah. But from the, the old chair. The other voice tells the man, <clears throat> the, the, the doctor, just stay here. Keep trying to keep people calm. Make sure no one calls the police. Does it look kinky? Like this is this person is being coerced. Well, you can't see into the room where you're at. And, but as the guy is stepping out and shutting the door behind him, he's like, remember, we know where your family sleeps. Okay, so that's different kind of coercion. Okay. Uh, does he look like he's going towards the stairwell? Or to the other stairs? Yes, he's not. He's not heading towards you. Basically, the, the stairwell there on opens on one end of the hallway. You're on the opposite you know, side. Uh, I will text the coterie. Y'all have got incoming. Well, basically, he opens the he opens the door, and Walter just kind of standing there at this point. Yep. <laughs> Surprise! I always said that as he, as he like opens the door and gets ready to as he's saying that little quip about like, "Oh, we I know where your family lives." Um, he that's what a is gonna be like. All right, you've got you guys have got really old vampire incoming. Well, he'll say it in like you know vampires can't. That's what I just I'm imagine. Geezer. <laughs> just imagine him opening the door, just like that. That scene for the first Avengers, like Walter just Hulk just <laughs> just just flat out sucker punches him as soon as he opens the door. I mean, that's to the storyteller's discretion, but I uh, no, he heard the opposed. screams from outside the door. He knew he had guys posted there. He's expecting somebody to be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's why. Go ahead. And I was just gonna say, hence why I said to storyteller's transgression. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, now, when he steps to the door, he has pulled a knife. <laughs> no! <laughs> that sounds horrible. Because we, we, just a knife, we have suspicions. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Uh, <laughs> so what you would see in GDO is as he walks through the door, he pulls that knife out. And it's like he puts the... He, he holds the blade up to his mouth like he runs it maybe over his tongue or something. Ooh, kinky. And then, yeah, when he opens the door, he sees Walter. And Walter, he's going to try to stab you. Yep. And you can see he's holding a, a decent-sized knife. Nothing freakish, nothing cartoonish. Uh, that is that is already dripping with blood. Walter is now concerned. <laughs> wait a minute. It's like, wait a minute. And this guy's wearing a suit, but it's not like a super fancy one. You know. He could pass yeah, off as being fancy if you want. He's dressed nicely, but not so nicely that you'd really give him a second thought. You know, if you if you pass him on the street. Oh, nice suit. All right, so this is Mille. Let's see. Uh, you can use your Dex to try to let's see, Dex and uh... athletics. Yeah, I'll say athletics. Try to get out of the way of this because you're you're not physically armed. Trying to block his knife with your hands might not work too well. Would you also accept, like, if he wanted to, like, try to strong arm it, like, to keep it away from him? Hmm. So I got one success on the hunger die and two tens. Again, right. I only got four dice, my man. The the other one was wasn't a success. All Don't right. ask me how I'm getting the tens. So we got what, five, five successes. How many did you get? Five. Okay. Uh, then yeah, that's how we'll describe it. Is he goes in for the the cut, and Walter manages to kind of jump out of the way, and and you know, sort of slap his wrist. His hand flicks to one yep. side, a little bit of the blood flicks off the blade. 
And when it hits the, uh, like, you know, uh, guardrail, it sizzles like he's dropped acid on the guardrail. Ooh. You know, it doesn't dissolve gets... like in the movie Aliens. It's not that strong. But... Oh, Walter definitely gets a lot more defensive, like, ooh, no. <laughs> <laughs> as, that, as that one thing would go, I don't want that. None of that now. <laughs> Uh, is this just a wide door where the where the stairs are? Is it just like a open spot where I could have seen the Dorito and the? You saw what you would have seen was him turn to the side from where you're at. Like he walked down the hallway, turned to the side, opened the gotcha. door, went in with the knife. Yeah. Uh, as that's happening, um, I get the sense that he's the only one, right? Yeah. He he. Those two people are about the only ones you've seen up here on this floor. Most of the okay, offices are cool. empty this time of night. Perfect. Um, Egidio will, as that's happening, Egidio will go in behind him to that uh, probably sobbing uh, office manager's room. Um, you know, hey. Okay, so are you opening the door and going in? I'm opening the door going out. I'm just, hey, hey. As you open the door, he's not sobbing, but he, he, he is momentarily off the phone. And you can hear him praying. Is it a language I understand? Oh, sure, it's just English, yeah. Okay, cool. Hey. He sounds like a man unsure of what he's gotten involved in, but not really having much choice. Hey, man. Oh. Hey, what's your name? Uh, Dr. Hubbard. Dr. Hubbard? Hey, it's really important right now that you... How's the GDO dressed? He's dressed. He's not dressed like he's. He's not dressed like super fancy. Uh, not as fancy as that guy for sure. Um, he's he's got like a he's got like um, almost like his best. He's like trying to cosplay a bruja. Um, just without the leather jacket. He's got uh like a a vest on. Um, he's got you know uh. What do you call it? Uh, just a regular tee on and some pa- some, like they're still nice jeans, but they're jeans, and they're like they're like the boot cuts, uh, and he's wearing like these boots that are good for the arches. Okay. Uh, he he looks up startled. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Just taking a second before I make my next cut. Who are you? Hey, don't worry about me right now. You, I I heard what that guy was saying to you. That's bullshit. Who who are you? I am the person who's going to get you to your family in one piece. Okay. I don't. I don't think you know who it is I've, I'm having to deal with. Uh, that guy's a piece of shit. I'll tell you that much. But I think the best thing for you to do right now. The elevator. Ignore whatever you see down there. Just head to your family. What about what about the patient? Leave town. I'm sorry. What about what about what about all the patients? Wouldn't you rather save your family right now? That guy sounds like he's a. Uh, that guy sounds like he's he's not gonna ask again. Give me manipulation. Yeah. Doop doop doop. It's not intimidation. You're not really scaring him. Uh... I'm still. It's still subterfuge. Like this is going to. Uh, this is still going to like benefit Egidio and or the the barons. Yeah, but persuasion could work too. So either one, Sub- okay. subterfuge or persuasion, whichever one you want to use. Okay. Persuasion works for me. That's more dice. Uh, Uh, three successes. Alright. He's a normal mortal. You only need two, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. 
go see them. Pack your bags. Go to say just. I'll tell you what. He goes into his go bag. He pulls out like 4K. Here. Go to Disney. Go go to Disney. Just we're never here. You've earned a vacation. You worked really hard. Uh. And you see like a like a decision clicking his head. Yeah, you're right. Just get me and the family out of here. Well done, Doctor. You may have saved more lives today than you know. As he's leaving, he's just like, "Good luck to you." I don't, I don't know exactly what all this is, but clearly you're the other side. <laughs> and you can't be any worse than what I've been dealing with. <laughs> as, as, just imagine as he's leaving, like if he looks over, he just sees the guy who is intimidating him in a like a brawl with this giant Dorito of a man. <laughs> well, like I said, that's down the hallway and through a door, over. so you know they're in the stairwell. <laughs> he might hear it, but he just heads for the elevator. There's, it's just like kaiju battle on the other side of them. <laughs> yeah. So the rest, the rest of you are heading upstairs. So uh, Old Montgomery is mm-hmm. probably coming up behind Walter at this point. And y'all are probably just a couple mm-hmm. a floor or two down from that. Uh, yeah. You're hearing the scuffling. Uh, it's about 10. We're going to go ahead and wrap here. So this was the episode of the show. The last thing you would see is Back the doctor the coming out of the bottom of the elevator in all that carnage y'all left down there. <laughs> <laughs> what the f- and it goes to credits <laughs> no no it's him stepping through it basically going what the hell you know getting more and more freaked out running out in the parking lot seeing where there are bodies on the at the other two entrances as well uh, but where, where that fight is also moved into the building mm-hmm. so he avoids walking through any actual ongoing fight but he just all this carnage he's leaving bloody footprints behind him when he first gets out of the building mm-hmm and just gets to his car and, and burn, you know, burns out, get out of there. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted. No cops are coming today. Oh, we got a first time chat. I don't know when that popped up. Yeah. It says Q ending music, so that was probably from somebody just recently mm-hmm. when I was talking about the wrap up. Yeah. Hey, Mira. <laughs> well, hello, Mira. Glad, yep. you're, glad you're able to make it. I don't know how much you watch, but we're glad you're here. Uh, but yes, we will wrap there. And next week, we will uh, wrap this all up. The Just first, a tidy little bow. The first half of the session will probably be resolving the going zone in the hospital. Mm. Uh, and then the going zone in the rest of the city. Yeah. Jidio has been wanting to take this hospital since like the second session. <laughs> You're it was welcome. always on the itinerary, but you never, none of y'all ever really pushed for it. Mm-hmm. So we just kept waiting now. and waiting and waiting, and then, and then just today, Kyle's like, you know what? F them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, but I hope y'all had, I hope y'all had fun. I, I really enjoyed yeah. running. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mira. Mira's, Mira's being very complimentary of us. Thank you. Uh, yes. But uh. So yeah, anybody that came by to watch, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you'll join us next time. Uh, next session, we'll wrap up this campaign. Then we will go on hiatus until January. Yeah. I forget exactly which day. Somewhere in January. Uh, uh, for a second. Usually, Usually and I will be back January 9th. Okay, it was probably the 9th. Like yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to say that's what we planned for was the 9th. The yeah, I, I knew we had picked a date that I didn't have it. But, but yes, and we will be, next year we will be playing a campaign of Lancer, an anime, anime sci-fi giant mecha game. So join us for that. <laughs> Until then, I was your, again, I was your storyteller for the evening, Jason. And with me was Eric playing Kyle, Sarah playing Emma, Jeremy playing Egidio, Rappy playing Iola, and Duba playing Walter. And we will see y'all next time. For the last time, this year at least.